In much of the country, Americans have experienced months of erratic mail service, which stretched on, of course, during the pandemic, right through the election and the holidays. And finally this week, progress at your local post office might, post office might be delivered. The United States Postal Service Board of Governors meets tomorrow. They could make some changes, or change could be sent from the White House to Louis DeJoy, the Postmaster General. News Nation's national political correspondent, Dean Reynolds, is live in our newsroom tonight with a look at how the Postal Service got here and where it might be going. Dean. Marnie, new management, greater demand, slower service, and the pandemic all combined to make the Postal Service the subject of a political debate that is still going on. The Post Office, for many, many years, has been, you know, run in a fashion that hasn't been great. Great workers and everything, but they have old equipment, very old equipment. And I don't think the post office is prepared for a thing like this. Then President Trump repeatedly argued during the campaign that the Postal Service was a joke and that mail-in ballots were ripe for corruption by partisans wanting to cheat him out of victory at the polls. Mail-in ballots, other than absentee, which is a great thing, but mail-in ballots are very dangerous for our country. But other factors added up to not only a loss of confidence, but a lessening of capability. Those mail-in ballots were increasingly in use because of the electorate's coronavirus concerns. They inundated the nation's 630,000 postal workers during all the primary and general election campaigns to an unprecedented degree. Online shopping increased heavily for the same reason. The Associated Press reported that by Christmas, more than a third of first-class mail was delivered late. Mr. Trump's endorsement of Republican fundraiser Louis DeJoy as the new Postmaster General led to significant changes in service. DeJoy got the job in May just as the political campaign shifted into high gear. Citing costs, he reduced overtime, banned late and extra mail deliveries, and last fall, though he denied ordering it, hundreds of badly needed mail sorting machines and collection boxes were taken out of circulation. The kind of moves that smelled like dirty tricks to Democrats, such as Congressman Ro Khanna of California. What is the harm in just putting those machines back until Election Day just for the peace of mind, for the confidence of the American people? Because they're not needed, that's why. But if it will restore people's faith in a democracy and avoid a polarized okay. electorate, I get, would think... Get, get I me would the think, billion, get me the billion, and I'll put the machines in. Okay, well, that's a commitment. We'll find a way to get you the money. Now President Biden is being pressed to improve the post office and at least diminish DeJoy's influence by making some new appointments to the USPS Board of Governors, which meets tomorrow for the first time since November's election. DeJoy and the current board wrote in USA Today this month that they are working on a comprehensive 10-year plan, which they say will significantly improve service and enable the organization to compete more effectively for customers while achieving our congressionally mandated goal of long-term financial sustainability. Now, by law, the Postmaster General is selected by that Board of Governors, and only the board can remove him. Today, there are four Republicans on that board, plus two Democrats, but also three vacancies, which means President Biden could conceivably have five Democrats on the board, which would be a majority and enough to show Louis DeJoy the door if they wanted to. Marnie? 